A large storm is coming to the United States over the next few days, which will bring the potential for more severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes. Additionally, we are expecting a heat wave to continue across much of the United States as we go into next week, which will bring the potential for record-breaking high temperatures. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, beginning with the southeast, which is an area that we've been keeping an eye on as there is a chance of a tropical depression or storm forming over the next few days. Actually, Invest 92L is located just off the east coast of Florida. This may become a brief tropical storm as it kind of meanders up the east coast over the next few days, bringing heavy rainfall and maybe even a low chance for some higher waves and even some rip currents due to the power of this storm system that may end up becoming our next tropical storm. That would be our third name storm so far of the season. Back over in the southern plains and back through the south Southwest. We got a lot of moisture right now across Texas back into the four corner states. This will help to elevate the potential for localized flooding, very low risk of severe weather for the next few days. And then back over in the northern plains is an area that we are keeping a very close eye on the potential for severe weather, which will begin today and run all the way into this weekend and early next week with all hazards of severe weather on the table. We are expecting the potential for significant severe weather for today, which is obviously the 4th of July. Definitely a day that you want to be staying weather aware across across areas like the northern and central plains and even back into the Midwest. And we'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And to look at that, we are going to look at our mid-level flow, which is in the 500 millibar level. Right now we have a shortwave trough that is moving across the northern plains and another one right behind that back over in the Pacific Northwest. And this storm system right here is actually what's going to bring the potential for some severe weather today, including the threat of scattered to numerous storms across the northern and central plains and back into the Midwest, which may disrupt 4th of July plans. We're going to talk more about that here in a moment. As we go into this weekend, that storm system will move across the Great Lakes with isolated severe weather for the Midwest on Saturday. And then as we go into late Saturday and into Sunday, we got another shortwave trough that is going to move across Montana and Wyoming. This will bring another threat of severe weather across the Northern Plains back into the Rockies on Sunday. And then eventually as we go into Monday and into Tuesday, that storm system will move into the Midwest, may see some isolated severe weather linger for the Midwest and the Ohio Valley on Monday, and then eventually by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, we are likely going to be seeing a big ridge forming back over in the Pacific Southwest, and if this does end up happening, I think things will start to get at least a little bit quieter across the Southeast, but this right here is northwesterly flow, and usually when this happens, we start to get into our mesoscale convective system season, which basically means lines of thunderstorms, and this can sometimes bring the potential for derechos this time of the year, especially in July and August, so we need to keep a close eye on this weather pattern. If that does does transpire, we may start to see some significant line of storms across the Midwest by the middle and end of next week, and then eventually by next weekend, things become more uncertain. But this ridge is likely going to be sticking there for at least a few days back over in the southwest, which would definitely increase the potential for lines of thunderstorms across the central and northern plains back into the Midwest and also into the Ohio Valley. So to put this all in the more simplistic terms, this is the future radar for the next several days, beginning with today, which we are expecting the threat of severe weather across the northern plains, the Midwest, and also back into the central plains with scattered to numerous severe weather being a possibility and as many of you know it is the 4th of July there will be a lot of outdoor plants today and unfortunately there will be the potential for frequent lightning so thunder roars go indoors here across the northern and central plains and back into the midwest and unfortunately back over in Florida the weather is not looking very nice either we are expecting scattered to numerous showers and storms down there and may, might even see some showers and storms as far south as Texas and Oklahoma this afternoon and evening so that could definitely hinder some of the outdoor plants it looks very nice, though, if you're in the Ohio Valley or Northeast. Very little rainfall is expected tonight. Might even see some showers and storms even as far west as Oregon today as well, which is not something that you want to see, especially with all the fireworks that are going to be going off tonight. Eventually into Saturday, that storm system will move into the Midwest with more severe weather being a possibility. I think really what we got to watch for, though, on Saturday will be back through Montana and also into Colorado with scattered severe weather, including hail, wind, and the potential for tornadoes across this area on Saturday. And that broad area of low pressure will continue to spin just off the coast of Florida and Georgia and even the Carolinas where we may see a brief tropical storm form. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. On Sunday, showers and thunderstorms continue across the Rockies and also some storms back over into the Mississippi River Valley on Sunday. And then by Monday into Tuesday, we're going to continue to see some storms, but I'm not really expecting anything super organized during the early to middle portions of next week. I think the weather pattern is going to be relatively quiet. I do think things start to ramp, though, back up again as we get closer to the middle of 
July, especially in the northern plains, the Midwest, and back into the Ohio Valley, where we might start to see some lines of thunderstorms make a return, which would lead to significant damaging winds and even the potential for tornadoes returning soon. And on top of all this, the 4th of July is going to be a warm one for many parts of the United States, including the Midwest, where we could have record-breaking high temperatures today across areas like Minnesota and North Dakota, with low to mid-90s as high temperatures. But look at the southern plains back over in Texas and Oklahoma. This will be one of the coldest 4th of Julys that we've had in quite some time, only in the 80s for high temperatures today. And then back over in the Pacific Northwest, things are starting to heat up, but unfortunately, it is going to get a lot warmer as we go into next week. And then up in the Northeast, things are looking pretty nice. 70s and 80s for high temperatures, definitely no complaints. They are very typical for this time of the year. And unfortunately, this warm stretch of weather is going to continue as we go into this weekend and early next week. Slightly above average temperatures are in the forecast east of the Rockies. But look at this as we go into the middle of next week. We are going to have a big plume of heat building across the Rockies and along the West Coast where record-breaking highs could make a appearance back over in the Pacific Northwest and along the Rockies. That heat would move into the Great Plains as we get closer to the middle and end of next week. So I do think record-breaking temperatures are a possibility sometime around July 10th to 12th. And then eventually, as we go into the following week, things become more uncertain. But I do think it is going to be a very warm July for most of the country. But there are obviously some exceptions, including areas like North Texas that have been dealing with below average temperatures for the most part to begin summer. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is the 4th of July. And we have a slight risk of severe weather in place across northern Minnesota, back into North Dakota, and a marginal threat all the way from Oregon back into Texas and Oklahoma, where all hazards of severe weather are going to be on the table today. But the greatest concern will be scattered damaging winds and also a little bit of isolated large hail. And then on top of that, there is a chance for a couple of tornadoes. This will be mainly around Fargo, North Dakota, back into far northern Minnesota. So stay weather aware and have ways to receive warnings. I don't really think we're going to see much of a tornado risk outside of this area, so that's good news. But obviously, there will be a lot of storms out there today. So definitely stay weather aware and have multiple ways to receive warnings. There's a low chance of a live stream today, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. As we go into Saturday, the threat of severe weather will continue with two different storm systems, one of which is that shortwave trough that'll be moving into the Midwest. This is what's bringing the threat of severe weather today. Not really expecting much in this area other than isolated hail and wind, and also there being scattered to numerous storms. And then back over in Montana and into the high plains, we are expecting scattered to numerous severe weather, including the risk of damaging winds, large hail, and even the potential for at least a couple of tornadoes. The damaging wind threat is the primary concern. Some large hail will also be possible, and then a tornado or two at least are possible across Montana, northern Wyoming, and far western South Dakota. And then on Sunday, the threat of severe weather will continue across the Great Plains, where another marginal threat of severe weather is in place from South Dakota all the way back into eastern Colorado, where damaging winds, hail, and a very low tornado risk will exist. I wouldn't be surprised if this does grow a bit further. It's going to depend on what actually happens tomorrow in terms of our storms, but we may have a remnant line of storms still ongoing across South Dakota as we go into late tomorrow, and if that does end up happening, we may see severe weather continuing to Sunday across parts of Nebraska and even central and eastern Kansas, so that'll be something to keep an eye on on Sunday. Now let's go day by day with the timing of severe weather, beginning with today, which is the 4th of July, and we are expecting scattered to numerous showers and storms across North and South Dakota, back into central Nebraska right around 4 o'clock, and a bunch of storms likely in northern Minnesota. Day Damaging winds will be the greatest concern out of all these storms, but if we get anything more discreet, there will be a potential for an isolated tornado or two. This is what it looks like by around 7, so getting closer to sunset when fireworks will start to be fired off. It looks like it's going to be very messy and very stormy here tonight across Minnesota and also through eastern South Dakota and eastern Nebraska, so stay weather aware. Definitely make sure that you have ways to receive warnings in case there are any warnings, and if obviously thunder roars, go indoors. It could definitely get dangerous out there. This is by 9 to 10 o'clock. Storms will continue to move to the east eventually approaching the Twin Cities a little after midnight tonight and then eventually into early tomorrow morning. Those storms will fall apart and we'll see some new storms fire off across the Midwest as we go into Saturday. So this is what the Midwest looks like for tonight. Not really expecting many storms out there, but we may see an isolated storm or two in Michigan. Eventually, as we go into early tomorrow morning, there will be plenty of showers and storms out there across Iowa, back into Wisconsin with damaging winds and hail being a possibility out of the most intense storms during the mid to late afternoon tomorrow and eventually into the early evening hours before the these start to just kind of die down, mostly just going to be producing rain and some isolated thunder and lightning after sunset tomorrow. Severe weather not really expected anytime after 10 to 11 o'clock tomorrow night. And then back over in the Central Plains, we are expecting scattered storms to be a possibility this afternoon and evening. Notice that most of these storms by around 7 to 8 o'clock tonight will be lingering across Central Nebraska.
Nebraska back into northern Kansas with isolated damaging winds and hail being a possibility in addition to frequent lightning. By late tonight, these storms will start to die down as they get closer to Omaha, but there will be likely more storms as we go into the overnight hours, especially across southern Nebraska, which may produce even a localized flooding threat, especially if we get training storms, which is what the HRRR model is showing here in eastern Nebraska and northern Kansas. So that'll be something to keep an eye on, but luckily it does look like we'll at least have some breaks in the storms, which means if you are shooting off any fireworks tonight, the weather does not look terrible, but it is definitely something that you want to make sure you have your phone with you. If you have a weather radar like Radar Omega, definitely be keeping an eye on that as there could definitely be some storms out there later this evening, right around when you might be shooting off some fireworks. As we go into Sunday, storms are going to continue across the central and northern plains. It's going to come down, though, to what actually happens on Saturday, but we may see a line of storms develop during the mid to late afternoon back over in South Dakota and Nebraska, which could produce damaging winds and a low tornado risk, even in parts of Iowa. This is a bit more of a question mark, though. We don't exactly know if this line of storms is going to happen. At least for now, the Storm Prediction Center has that marginal threat of severe weather in place back over in the central plains for some pop-up storms during the afternoon, which most of these would be producing large hail and damaging winds and a low-end tornado risk, as there will be at least some wind shear in this environment. And lastly, the tropics are heating up. We do at least have a 60% chance of development just off the coast of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas over the next really 48 hours or so. I do think there is a chance of at least a tropical depression. If not, we may see a tropical storm form, which really the biggest concern, no matter if it develops or if it doesn't develop, will be the potential for flooding rainfall along the coastline. And this is the probability of a tropical depression forming over the next few days, according to the European Ensemble. And right now, the probabilities look actually pretty high. We're talking about a 70 to 80 percent chance here back over near Georgia, South Carolina and Florida. But if we look at the tropical storm probabilities, they are very low. It does not really appear as if we are going to be seeing a tropical storm out of this. But if we were to have one, it would likely form back over in South Carolina. I think if we do see something develop, it'll be, be between basically now all the way through Sunday. After Sunday, the window of opportunity for this thing to form gets very, very low. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. And in case you haven't noticed, this is the new weather studio. We don't have any decoration on the back wall yet. We are working on that, but this is what it looks like on the front end, what I'm currently looking at. We are now up to eight total monitors. If you have any sort of feedback in terms of the background or even the lighting, anything like that, definitely leave a comment down below as I'll be reading every single comment. And on top of that, I really appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you to all the members of the channel as well. It would not be possible to do this without you guys. Really appreciate all of your support and also have a fantastic rest of your 4th of July. There may not be another video here for a couple days, maybe even a few days. If the weather is kind of on the quieter side of things, we'll just have to kind of wait and see how things go. But I appreciate all the support and we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.